Really believe in a dark mansion. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you good? All the time. Are you good? All the time. The great God, the great God, the good God is everything to us. So I believe in that mansion. So I'm working to go and see that mansion. We'll have man of God make the world. Their young ones shall lie down together, 
The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. And the winged child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him and his rest in place shall be glorious. I want to speak to you today, brothers and sisters, under the topic, Better Must Come. Amen. Better Must Come. It's not like you know, I look for better. Everybody just quiet so. Better must come. And thank you, Sister Brown. Father in heaven, may you bless your people, O oh God. May you bless your word. May we be inspired. May we look forward to the better you have in store for us in Jesus. Thank you for sparing our lives, O oh God, that we can be in this moment and experience your presence as we worship together. May your word be driven home to somebody today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Better must come. Some, probably decade and a half ago, I used to like this song by QQ. I'm not sure you adults should know him, but he's a young Jamaican artist, one of the youngest at the time. It was maybe 10 or 11 when he was on the dance hall scene and he had a song that I used to like very much in which he said, better must come, better must come, tell the you get to you them better must come. And as we go up and down and communicate with our brothers and sisters, those who are often in circumstances that aren't the best, we usually seek to inspire them, we usually seek to encourage them by letting them know that better must come. Sometimes life can be very hard on some of us, extremely hard. Sometimes we're tired and frustrated with the suffering with the lack, with the consistent drama and uh, the amount of stuff that comes with it that make our human lives and experiences so unpleasant. But there is this undying hope that tomorrow may just be another day. There is this undying expectation that better must come tomorrow. It can't be that it will always remain this way. That life is just so hard that there's so much crime and, and violence, so much unruliness, so much wickedness that are taking over the land and by extension the world. We have this undying, this ceaseless expectation that this can't be all there is to life. Somehow better must come. The Israelites, brothers and sisters, were in a context and situation in the 7th century BC where they looked forward to and anticipated this better that was to come. The Assyrians and Lebanese had been afflicting them. They had some of them in captivity, driven them from their land, had cut them down as it were like a tree and had left the stump. And so in chapter 10, God says in verse 24, Thus says the Lord, God of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, don't be afraid of the Assyrian. He will strike you with a rod and lift up his staff against you. Just like the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease and 
as, as, as my anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will stir up a spirit for him like the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. As his rod was on the sea, so will he lift up in the manner of Egypt. We jump down to verse 33 where the Bible says, Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts will love off the bow with terror. He can trap it down. He's talking about uh, when he comes now to uh, execute judgment on the Assyrians and Lebanese who were afflicting and destroying his people. Those of high stature will be hewn down. The haughty will be humble. He, he will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron. And Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. The Assyrians and Lebanese brothers and sisters had a, a symbolically chopped down Israel and Judah as if they were a tree. They were boastful and arrogant based on what they were able to do as well as their stature. They had portrayed themselves like they were high bows, big branches, lofty and haughty. A massive forest engulfing his people, uh, priding themselves in what they were able to do. Uh, at this time, imagine what Judah would have been experiencing. Uh, imagine how they would have felt that God's promises uh, would not be fulfilled any longer. Because it is through Judah that God had promised to send the Messiah. But now the house of Judah seemed like it was cut down to the ground uh, with only the tree trunk left. Uh, it's within this context God says, uh, There shall come a rod uh, from the stem or the trunk uh, of Jesse. Uh, the enemy had cut them down uh, and had left just the stump, uh, leaving them to die. Uh, but God says, uh, It is out of the same trunk uh, that the rod is going to come. Uh, and I wonder to myself, uh, How many times? Uh, People cut us off. How many times people live we don't? How many times they cut us like trees in such a way that only the trunk is left and it is left there to die. There's no leaves to get oxygen to feed and nurture the tree. It can't collect dew from night and the rain to feed it. The stump was left to dry and to rot with all hopes and the future dead with it. But it's that same trunk, it is that same stump that God brings back to life. I'm sure you see it in nature over and over when you chop down the tree and you just leave the trunk that eventually over time it starts to bloom and blossom again. It's time to go. New life start to spring from it. Some trees are stubborn. Some trees are hard to die. Some trees refuse to give up. And so in this context, we are seeing something very similar where Judah was cut down and left to be just for some to die. But God says it's from that stump. The root, from the root of that uh, the stump, that the rod is going to come. The branch is going to grow. And guess what? My spirit will be on him. Brothers and sisters, you may have been cut down with the stump just left for you to die, to dry away, to run off with all your plans, all your goals, and all your purposes come to nothing. But as long as God is with you, He can cause new life to spring from the trunk. He can cause new branches to grow from the stump. He can cause it to experience a resurrection. He can cause you to spring forth again. You may feel like a dry stump, but God is with you. I want to listen to me. You may feel like all hope is gone, but God is with you. It may seem like your tomorrow now can ever come, but God says the raw are to grow from them. The branch will 
spring forth from the roots and guess what my spirit this here brothers and sisters is talking about Jesus the Messiah who as it were the enemy thought to have gotten rid of them to prevent from coming as a result of decimating Judah but God says from the root the branch is going to come from the stump the rod is going to grow in other words it does not matter what the enemy do and how much they chop and cut down God's tree that still cannot stop God's plans and purposes that still cannot Present God from bringing to life that which seems dead. There are many of us who don't get cut down and left to die. But if God's purpose has not been completed in your life, that dead trunk will spring you life. As God still has a plan for you, you're not go dead until it fulfills. You're not gonna die until it happens. No wonder the psalmist could have says, I shall not die, but to be you may cut me down to the trunk, you may cut me down to the stump, but as long as God's hands is on me, as long as his eyes are over me, as long as God has a plan for me, I shall not die. The word is not for the law, it may seem hopeless for you. But better must come. It may seem like you are not dead, but better must come. It may seem like you have been suffering all your life, and the remainder will remain the same. Let me remind you, better must come. Just as how God could have caused the Messiah to spring from the trunk of Judah, He can bring you life to the trunk of your life. He can bring you life to your dead situation. He can bring you life from that which seems hopeless. Yes. If his hands are on your life, that child must give life. If God not done with the tree yet, the tree has to go back. Church, I said, better must come. If God not done with you yet, there's a lot of hope for you. In the Jamaican colloquial, we say, man no day, man no day, they call him topia. Because as bad as the circumstances may seem, as rough as it is, as hopeless as it appears, God can cause life to spring from the trunk. God can raise dead things that are life. God can restore hope in the midst of hopelessness. As long as the trunk is there, let us go. Amen. The Bible goes on to explain the character of the Messiah. God is going to put his spirit on him. It will remain on him. His spirit will abide in Jesus. He's not going to just come to visit. But the Holy Spirit will be one who will permanently reside on his Messiah. And as a result of the Spirit resting on him, the Bible says he, he will have the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. All of these here are not a different spirit. These seven mentions of the different things here, brothers and sisters, are meant to encapsulate the perfect or fullness of the Spirit of God in his life. And as a result of having the Spirit, he will have wisdom and understanding. 
He will have counsel and power. He will have knowledge and the reference for God. And I submit to you, church, that according to Luke chapter 4, Jesus had the Spirit of God. In fact, in Matthew chapter 3, that was read earlier, after John made that statement, he saw Jesus coming to him. And when he baptized him, the Bible says, John saw and behold the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and it rested and remained on Jesus. In Luke chapter 4, from verse 16 through to 20, when Jesus went into the synagogue, the Bible says he found a place in Isaiah where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He quotes Isaiah 61, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, to loose those who are prisoners, to set them free, to preach the gospel to the poor, to announce the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he says, today, this very day, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. Jesus had the Spirit of God, and that's why, brothers and sisters, he was so wise and understanding. So many times, the religious leaders, they tried to trap him, to get rid of him before time, but in his wisdom, he always got out of their trap. When they brought people to him to condemn them, Jesus understood their plight and situation. He was merciful to them. When they came to him, Lord, what should we do? He gave them wise counsel. When they needed demons to be cast out, he had the power to cast them out. The text says the spirit of might will be on him. When they were hungry and had only five loaves and two fish, he had the power to multiply it. When the winds and the seas started to get out of hand, when he was on boat with his disciples, he stood up when they woke him from sleep and said, Keep me your boat. I wonder if you're listening to me. Be quiet, peace be still, I'm trying to sleep. The disciples were amazed that the winds and the sea, they obeyed him. They had to obey him because he had power, he had might. I want the church to listen to me. It does not matter what the circumstance is. Nothing was too big for our Jesus. Even today, what is it are you struggling with? What is it that's trying to destroy you? What is it that's trying to make you fearful? Let me remind you, he's mighty. Let me remind you, he's strong. Let me remind you that your God is powerful. Verse 1 puts it this way, the one who dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide, the church now hear me, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Is there anyone here who's facing some tough situations? Let me remind you, your God is strong. Facing some undefeatable foes, let me remind you, our God is mighty. Are you facing some circumstances that seem like they will take you out before time? Let me remind you, He's strong. He's big. He's bad. He's powerful, and there's nothing that's too hard. For him to do it. Isaiah said the spirit of might. Will rest upon him. The spirit of knowledge. And of the fear of God. He will know things. Both the good. And the bad. Not only will he know brothers and sisters. But his knowledge and the spirit that's on him. Will prod him to act appropriately. His delight 
is in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by the sight of his eyes. Nor decide by what his ears hear. You know, brothers and sisters, when, when the poor come for judgment, those who are in charge and, and judges and adjudicators, they, they, they can look and automatically condemn the poor man. As they hear, they just make up their mind, especially if it's their friend or somebody who seems powerful. They rule in their favor, even if they are wrong. They are people who just look at us and they, they judge us. They look at the way we dress, the way we speak, some of the things we are doing, and, and they pass off their judgments. People say things about us. Things are spreading. People are, are slandering and spreading rumors. And before they get to know and understand the intricacies of the situation, they automatically judge. But the Bible says Jesus will not operate this way. The Bible says he's not going to judge by what his eyes see. Nor quickly decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he will judge the poor. And decide with equity for the meek of the earth. A lot of us poor people can't get justice here. But Jesus will give justice. A lot of us who are meek and humble and, and don't have money and don't have somebody to defend our case. We can't get justice. But let me remind you, better must come. How about if you're listening to me? Let me remind you, when the Messiah puts in his appearance, things are going to change. In righteousness, according to truth, according to law and order, that's how he will judge that's how he will adjudicate him. He's going to defend the poor. He's going to decide with equity for those who are humble and meek and who the oppressors are taking advantage of. And those who are wicked and think they could get away with their lifelong oppression of wickedness. The Bible says he will strike the earth with the roar of his mouth. That's the judgment that he will issue. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He will slay the wicked. It may seem like injustice and wicked people are getting away now. But let me remind you, their day is coming. It might seem like they are going back now and crushing and grinding the poor. Their day is coming. Revelation chapter 2 reminds us that Jesus who has the sword proceeding out of his mouth, that's what he's going to use to judge and rule the nations. Revelation 19 reminds us when he returns with his chariots and the angels are with him and the saints are with him, he will slay the wicked with the sword that is issued out of his mouth. They may get away now in corrupt human cause, but they can't get away with Jesus. They may get away with their mayhem and killings and murders and oppression now, but they can't get away with Jesus. We are told in Proverbs chapter 15, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Many a times we have to live our lives in crippling fear because they are wreaking havoc in society with their guns and their violence and they're doing things and somehow it seems like justice can't catch them yet. But let me remind you, better must come. They may fool some people in power now, but they can't fool Jesus. They may get away with crimes now, but they're not going to get away with God. They may do their wrongs now and hurt people, but soon things are going to change. When Jesus comes, he will give to the wicked their just reward. The Messiah can't be bribed. I wonder if you're listening to me. The Bible says righteousness will be the belt of his wrongs and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The belt was used to hold their robe. 
and their clothing together as a sure support. That's what's going to determine how he acts. He cannot be corrupted. He's not going to be bribed. He's not going to look at faces, but he will deal faithfully. He will judge righteously. He will judge with equity. People may seem to get away now, but the Messiah will come. He's going to come again. And brothers and sisters, he will execute judgment. He will execute judgment in righteousness, in truth, and in equity. His character is incorruptible. It is holy. He's filled with God's spirit. And he does everything according to the spirit of God. Now here's where it gets exciting. In verse 6 through to 10, the Bible tells us what's going to be the effects of the rule of the Messiah. When he comes the second time, the effects of the rule of the Messiah. The Bible says the wolf also and the lamb, they will lay down and dwell together. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fat live together and a little child will lead them. Here we have the Messiah ushering in an era and a reign of peace where prey and predator are going to get along like godly siblings. How about if you're hearing me? Wolves that used to prey on innocent lambs will lay down with them and not desire to eat them. Leopards who would prey on young goats will lie down with them. Lions who prey on calf and fatling will dwell together with them. And guess what? A little child will lead the all of them. People often use this phrase here to refer to children when they are ministering or functioning in church as, as children leading adults, but that's not what the text is saying. God never assigned for children to lead adults. What the text is saying here, these predators are dangerous to the prey as well as to the children. But when the Messiah comes and ushers in his reign of peace and righteousness, prey and predator will get along without hurting each other. And children who would naturally be afraid of them and can't get hurt by them, these things will not hurt them any longer. They'll be able to hurt predators. They'll be able to walk with predators. They'll be able to go on their backs. They'll be able to touch up their fangs and their teeth and their sharp claws and lead them like they lead the Messiah pets. When the Messiah ushers in his reign, better I go call. Things I will change up. I wonder if you're listening to me. And just like how in the natural world, the animal world, where you have prey and predator getting along, even so, brothers and sisters, when Jesus puts in his appearance, those who used to oppress and are changed by his grace, along with those they were oppressing, they're going to come together. He will unite them. There will not be any more ravenous people and creatures hurting each other. The Messiah will usher in a kingdom of grace, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of righteousness, where we all get along, where we all love each other, where we all live well, where we all look out for each other, where everybody will have and live a sweet life. In other words, better Muslim. Talk to me, church. In other words, Peter must come. Isaiah continues by 
I say it. The cow and the bear will graze. Their young ones will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like an ox. Lions, brothers and sisters, are meat eaters. They are carnivores. They only eat meat. But when Jesus puts in his appearance and changes things around, lions will eat grass. Lions will be keen. The carnivorous natures will be removed. And guess what? The nursing child, the little pygmy then, who crawl up and down in the host, they will play in the cobra's hole. Brothers and sisters, if you know anything about cobras and those kinds of things, they are poisonous. And they will strike or bite anyone that moves close to them. And when they, when they inject with the poison, which is very toxin, toxic, in no time, a cobra's toxin or poison will kill. But when the Messiah changed things around, children can play with cobras, and nothing will happen to them. They shall not hurt, nor destroy, in all my holy mountain, because the whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Brothers and sisters, when you look at the sea, the amount of things it co covers, the amount of creatures that live in there, it's covering. The Bible says, just like the waters are covering the sea and the vast expanse of the ocean. That's how much his knowledge will spread throughout the earth. His knowledge will be in the animal kingdom and make it better. His knowledge will be among us as humans and make us better. I know sometimes when we watch the news and listen to the radio and see what's happening even here in Cascade, our hearts ache. Our hearts burn. We are frustrated and we often wonder to ourselves will things get better? Will Jamaica change? Will people operate differently? Well, the text is telling us better must go. The text is letting us know that when Jesus returns, better are going to come. Wars are going to cease. Disease will be no more. Predators will change. Is there anybody here who is listening to me? Those that are toxic and poisonous is going to change. Human relationships will be better. Animals will live better. Better must come. Better must come. Life may be hard now, but when Jesus comes, better must come. You may not see a way out now, but better must come. You may suffer for a while now, but better must come. You may be jobless and can't eat now, but better I go come. Disease may be ravishing your body now. Help me out, somebody. Better must come. Things may be rough in your home with your family now, but better must come. Jamaica and the world may be ravished by guns and violence and sex and drugs and all that is destructive. But according to the text, better must come. We are told in Second Peter chapter three that according to his promises, we look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein righteousness dwells. Better must come. John reminds us in Revelation 21, I saw a new heaven. Yes, yes. Talk to me, somebody. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Because the first heaven and the first earth, they passed away and the sea that brought separation was no more. And the holy city, yes. New Jerusalem, yes. it comes down from God out 
of heaven and God will dwell with us and be our God and we will be his people and guess what he shall wipe away he shall wipe away everything from our eyes and there will be no more death no more pain no more suffering no more thirst no more hunger because the former things will pass away better must come when the messiah comes better i will come is there anybody here who may have it hard now but you look forward to the better that's coming is there anybody here who doctors ought to give up on now but you look forward to when better comes is there anybody here tired of the crime and the violence and the pestilence but you anticipate the better must come. Is there anybody here tired of the ungodly music that invades our ears and our space? I let you know today, better, better must come. Must come. Yes. If you're tired of the broken marriages, better must come. If you're tired of the broken homes, better must come. If you're tired of the emptiness of the church, I said better must come, better must come. If you're tired of the hard lines where you barely sustain yourself day by day, better must come. If you're tired of the nakedness and barefootedness, better must come. If you're tired of being sick and tired, must come. Amen. Church, I say better. Must come. The Bible says in that day there will be a root from Jesse and he will stand as a banner for his people. Church, we stand under the banner of Prince Emmanuel. He goes before us for battle. He goes before us to defend us. He goes before us to protect us. He goes before us to keep us. Better must come. And the Bible says the Gentiles, that's you and I, we will seek him and we'll find him and his resting place. His kingdom will be glorious. And the rest of the passage goes on to say how he's going to bring the remnant of Israel, the remnant of his people from all over the world. And they'll be gathered together and united. Better must come. Better must come. When Jesus ushers in his kingdom, better must come. The lives we be living, brothers and sisters, will not be disturbed by drugs. They're not going to be disturbed by guns and machetes and, and knives and, and violence and brokenness. The Bible says we stand under his banner of peace, his banner of love, his banner of grace, and his resting place. His kingdom, the new world, will be glorious. The new world is going to be awesome. Better must come as we look forward to the second advent of Jesus. Better have come. Better have come. And this better church will change the mindset. It will change the heart. It will change every bad and broken situation. Better must come. Don't make it tough now, but better I will come. You may care young good now, better I will come. You may care dress good and polite now, but better I will come. The knees and the back and the eyes and the head and the whole body may be giving you problems now, but in the name of Jesus, 
sight must come. Cascade may be overrun by hard unbelievers and the young people are being sought into scamming and that which is bad now. But in the name of Jesus, better must come. Life may seem hard, tumultuous, and miserable now, but better must come. It may be hard to find a little money to, to build your house in proper structure now and, and to afford the things you want in life now. It may be hard now, but better must come. When Jesus puts in his appearance, things will not remain the same. All of this bloodshed and hate and, and drama and mayhem, it's going to end. Better must come. Better must come. Jesus will bring in better. And the experience in his kingdom will be glorious. Amen. It will be grand. Oh, yeah. It will be awesome. Yes. It will be full of love. It will be full of compassion. Full of mercy, full of grace, and all that.